What is going on guys? It's Luke back here with another video and today we have the Australian Open 2024 bracket challenge. So let's get started at the top with Novak Djokovic, the number one overall seed. We're going to take him to win that one over the qualifier. Now the next match between the wildcard Pullmans and Popperin, we're going to go Popperin. He's been pretty consistent the last 18 months on the ATP tour. Next we have Gael Monfils and Yannick Hoffman. Hoffman is kind of up and down, but I think Monfils, the last six months when the moment matters, he's stepped up a lot. So I'm going to give it to Monfils. Had that crazy win at Roland Garros over Sebastian Baez in five sets. So I'm going to give the edge to Monfils. Then I'm going to go for Andy Murray to beat Thomas Echeverry. Echeverry has been struggling since the clay season last year hasn't really played his best tennis and Andy Murray in the first round of majors has been very good the last three or four years since his return to the main level of tennis so I'm going to give Andy the win there then Manorino and Vavrinka. this one is going to be Manorino to win this one um, he's played very well to start the year in the ATP Cup France made a decent run and I'm going to go with him then Shevchenko and Munar. I'm going to go for Shevchenko. Shevchenko is a little inconsistent. When he's not playing well, he ends up getting destroyed. But I do think he'll beat Munar, who's more of a clay quarter. Then O'Connell and Garin. I'm going to go for O'Connell here. Garin hasn't played much tennis on the main level of the tour, been dealing with a lot of injuries, has switched rackets a lot of times. So I'm going to go for O'Connell to win that one. He started the season pretty well. Then Bautista Gut and Ben Shelton. I do think Ben Shelton will win this one. Bautista Gut, no longer in his prime, really, has been on the steady decline, and I think Shelton will win that one. Then Fritz to beat Diaz Acosta, who's more of a clay quarter. I like this matchup between Borna Gojo and Roberto Carballas Bena. Both of them have played super well to start the season. I do. I do like. Gojo to win this one. Carbales Bena is very consistent, has been great, but I think Gojo has the bigger weapon, the bigger serve, and his backhand is really good as well. So I'm going to go for Gojo to win that one. Then Maroshan and Chilich. I'm going to go for Maroshan to win this one. He has such a high potential, Maroshan, the way he has those touch droppers, and he's got a, not the biggest ground strokes, but they go super deep in the court. And Chilich, of course, coming back from injury. I do like Maroshan to win that one. Then Sarundolo in a qualifier. Give me, actually, give me the qualifier. Sarundolo has been really not playing well ever since the clay court season ended last year. So, or the grass court season, he was okay. So I'm going to take a qualifier regardless there. Then Lorenzo Musetti and Benjamin Bonzi. Give me Musetti to win that one. Van Asha and Duckworth. I struggle to pick Von Asha to win in a major. I just feel like he doesn't have the experience in James Duckworth, the Aussie at home. I do think he'll get that one done. Then we have Alexander Vukic and Jordan Thompson. Give me Jordan Thompson there. Had that win over Nadal in Brisbane, which was a high level of tennis from him. He played really well, was really aggressive, taking that backhand up the line. Give me Thompson. And then Berrettini and Tsitsipas. Give me Tsitsipas, Berrettini, again, don't know what we're going to get from him. He could definitely cause an upset here and do something special, but I do think Tsitsipas will get it done. Then Yannick Sinner and Bodek van de Zanskop. Give me Yannick, playing like the best player in the world at the moment. Then Kachin and the qualifier. I'm going to go for the qualifier there. I'm not really impressed with how Kachin is playing. Pretty inconsistent off the ground, doesn't have that big of weapons. Then Galan and Kubler. Um, this is a interesting one here because Galan, when he's playing well, he's playing really well, and he tends to do well in majors, Galan. He made the quarterfinals of Wimbledon and round of 16 at U.S. Open a couple of years ago. And Jason Kubler, the Aussie, going to have the home crowd. Kubler doesn't have great weapons. He's more of a consistent player. Um I edge toward Kubler to win this one. I think he'll get it done. Then, J.J. Wolf and Sebastian Baez. I like Sebastian Baez to win this one. Played well to end the season last year. Then, Francis Tiafo and Borna Charich. Give me Tiafo there. I just think that this 
match could go a long way, but Borna Chorch doesn't have the weapons that Tiafo has. Tiafo, the bigger serve, um, bigger forehand between the two. Chorch really struggles off the forehand win, wing, so give me Tiafo. Then Mac Hack over a qualifier. Mac Hack has played pretty well. Then Tabilo, another guy over a qualifier. Tabilo has won now 10 matches in a row. Um, dating back to the beginning of the season where he won a challenger. Now he's playing pretty well in Adelaide. So give me Tabilo. And then Altmaier and Khachanov. Haven't seen much of Khachanov. He did lose to Rusevori and Altmaier though did withdraw against Arthur Fees. I'm going to go for Khachanov there. I think when he's playing really well, he's a great player. And he's just not always healthy, but it was pretty good to start this season last year. Could see him making a run once again in Australia. Then Ronich and Demonar. Demonar is playing super well. He always plays his best at the beginning of this season in the ATP Cup. He had that crazy match in 2020, the COVID year, with Nadal. That was four years ago. Hard to believe it, but he looked really, really promising in that one um, after he went the distance with Nadal at the ATP Cup. Then he beat Djokovic this year at the ATP Cup. So he seems to be playing his best tennis at the beginning of the season in Australia, and I do think he'll get that one done. Then Arnaldi, a player that's been pretty electric, um, a younger guy, and he had a really strong end to last season and has been Pretty good since then. I'm going to take him to win over Walken. Then Kotov and Rinderneck. Kotov has been really good. So I'm going to take him. And then Jerry to beat the qualifier. Korda and a qualifier. Depends who the qualifier is. I do think Korda gets through that one though. And then Halis and a qualifier. Halis got a big serve, big forehand. I'm going for Halis. Then Taro Daniel and Christopher Eubanks. I'm going to go for Taro Daniel there. I just think that Eubanks has really peaked at Wimbledon last year and was pretty good throughout the season last year. But now now he has been on the decline ever since the end of the grass season, and I don't think he'll be able to beat Daniel, who's a more consistent player than him. Then Andre Rublev and Thiago Sabath wild. I'll go for Rublev to win that one. Next, we have Holger, Runa, and Yoshi Nishioka. I'm going to go for Holger to win that one. Made the finals of... Brisbane lost to Dimitrov, but solid run for him to start the season. I think he'll beat Nishioka. Then Laszlo Jair, a veteran, stingy, been around for a while. I'm going to go with him to beat Kazo. Then Arthur Fees, a player I really like, to beat Yuri Vesely. Italian Greek sport and Roman Safiel. And Roman has been just taking down seeds um, the last two and a half years in first round. He's a pretty up and down player himself you know he tends to play really good sets and really bad sets like his matches end up being pretty consistent how he goes through each tournament you know he makes the third round in about every event but sometimes he'll lose a set 6-0 and then he'll come back and win the next set 6-0 so he he plays a big game big tennis big off of both sides a little up and down but I do think he'll beat Greek sport who hasn't had the best um, six months. Then Hugo Umber, who's been playing really well to beat a qualifier, and then Zhang to beat Korea. Shapovalov and a qualifier. I have to go for the qualifier. Shapovalov just hasn't played lots of tennis um, recently, been injured, been dealing with lots of problems, and when he has played, it hasn't been very good. So I will go for the qualifier there. And then Hubie and a qualifier. Give me Hubie Hercoc to win that one. Next, we have this section of the draw, which I think is stacked. We have Grigor Dimitrov, who's been a top five player for the last eight months, going up against Marton Fushevich. Give me Grigor in that one. Then Sebastian Offner and Kokonakis. Sebastian Offner has been very, very good um, to start the season. He really started to play well at the end of last year, uh, was good on the clay. He's an older player, but has really found his stride. And he won. He made it to the semifinals in Hong Kong before losing to Rusevori. And then he made the quarters in whatever tournament they're at now. I think that's Auckland. So, or, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Auckland. So give me 
often are there. Then Martyr and Borges. Borges just got humiliated by Arthur Fee, so I'm going to go for Martyr and then Davidovich Fokina to beat Les Tien. Okay, we're we're making some progress here, getting to the bottom section of the draw. We have Felix Ojeel, Yassim, and Dominic Team. I don't think Team is consistent enough to be a top 30 player right now. I'm going to go Felix. And then Muller and the qualifier. I'm going to go for the qualifier here. Rissavori and Patrick Kipson. I'm going to go for Rissavori. He started the season super strong, and I think he'll continue that. And then Daniel Medvedev going up against a qualifier. I'm going to go for Daniel to win that one. Zverev and Kupfer. Kupfer has played well, moved up the rankings to start the season, but Zverev at the ATP Cup has been has had the best start to the season as anybody so far. So give me Sasha in that one. And then Quan and the qualifier. I'm going to go for Quan to win that one. Next, we have Mickelson to beat Joshua McKenzie. Never heard of that player before, but I think Mickelson, who has a big serve, big forehand, can get it done. And then Yeri Lahech to beat Zapata Morales, who has not played well recently. Then Nori and Varillas. Nori has not been playing well, seems to be struggling with some injuries, but I will go for Nori to beat Varillas. And then a qualifier to beat Lajovic, who hasn't played well in the past, ever since he won that tournament back in... Uh, Serbia, where he beat Rublev and Djokovic in the same event. He hasn't been playing as well, so give me the qualifier. And then Purcell and the qualifier. Purcell has started the season pretty well, so I'll go for him. And then Casper Ruud to beat Ramos Vinyas. Tommy Paul, and probably the worst player in this field, Gregoire Barrer, who is just not that good. I'm going to go for Tommy Paul. And then Garone and Draper. This could be interesting because Draper is super, super good. However, Jack is not the most physically gifted player. And I don't mean that by athleticism. He's super, super strong, super quick around the court. But endurance-wise, he gets injured a bit. They've had to manage the amount of matches he's playing. And he just made a deep run two tournaments in a row. Now he's playing in... um, Adelaide right now and is set to face Bublik in the semifinals. He'll probably win that one. And then he'll have to go in the finals against Korda, which he'll probably win again. And then he'll have to come two days later and play this match against Garone, who is no pushover. I'm going to go for Jack, though. I just think he's that good. Um, You can't assume that these matches are going to be based on physicality in the first round. So give me Draper. And then... Miamir and Watanuki. Give me Miamir. He started the season pretty well, almost beating Jack Draper. And then Hikata and Struff. Hikata is always good in Australia. Has started the season pretty well. The thing that worries me about Hikata going up against the big server is that Hikata doesn't really um, hold serve that well. And he, he's pretty good return-wise, but that could get lay, uh, leveled against a good player like Struff who could really take away his advantage returning because Struff is going to hit a lot of aces. So I will go for Jan Leonard there. And then Bublik and a Q. I feel like a Q is going to win this one. Um, Like I said with Draper, he, Bublik, is playing Draper today. So we're on Thursday and the tournament starts, well, technically we're Friday in Australia and the tournament starts Sunday in Australia. So Bublik is going to have to travel um, from Adelaide to Melbourne. Only have a couple of days rest. I think a qualifier there. Then JC Shang to beat McDonald. Shang has played super, super well um, to start the season. So I like Shang. And then Evans and Sonego. Give me Dan Evans. I feel like Sonego is not the clutchest player Um In these tough first rounds, this could go five sets, and I do think Evans would win it. And then Carlos Alcaraz over Gasquet. So now we'll start here, Alcaraz and Evans. We saw Dan Evans take a set off of Carlos in the U.S. Open. I don't think that'll happen again. I think Carlos will get it done. And then I think J.C. Shang to beat a qualifier. So the young J.C. Shang making it to the third round. He's kind of the next, next generation, you know. They call Alcaraz sinner. Fee's part of the next generation. Shang is even one generation after them. And he is 
been playing pretty well, so he's one to watch out for. Then Struff and Kitsmanovic. I think Kitsmanovic can make a little run here. He, when he's playing well, he's playing really well. I remember a couple of years ago in Miami Indian Wells, he was having a great run. Then he kind of slowed down as we hit the clay court season. That kind of disrupted his momentum, but I do think he'll take it, get the win over Struff. And then Draper to beat Tommy Paul. I think Draper has just more weapons than Tommy. We saw it yesterday. 6-4, six, 6-1. Six, Draper can put the ball anywhere. Tommy's a little bit limited offensively. Doesn't really put the ball away that well. I'll go for Draper to win that one. Then Rude and Purcell. Give me Rude here. I think Rude is going to be the opposite of what he is last year. I don't think he's going to have a lot of explosive results like he had last season, making final of French Open, a couple of other good runs. But I do think he's going to be Mr. Consistent this year. I think he's going to make a lot of deep runs. Maybe being outside of the top 10 will take some pressure off him. And I think Casper will have a good tournament here in Australia. And I think he'll go up against Nori. Then Lahechka and Mikkelsen. I think Lahechka is the more well-rounded player. Give me Yuri in that one. And then Zverev, not too difficult to beat Quan. Zverev has a very nice draw for him so far. I do think out of the four top players in the world right now, Alcaraz, Djokovic, Sinner, and Medvedev, just a little preview to how I'm picking this. I do think Alcaraz right now is the weakest one. I think he needs the... M and I'm not... I don't mean... For the season, I just mean in Australia, he hasn't really played any matches. And I feel like out of those four, you know, Medvedev doesn't really need any matches to be feeling well. Djokovic played a few at the ATP Cup Center. Um, he's shown he doesn't really need many matches. And Alcaraz, you just don't know how long it'll take him to play into form. I feel like he, if you're Zverev, that's who you want to be in the same quarter as. So we'll see what comes down how it comes down when I pick Zverev and Alcaraz, but we'll see about that later. Then Rusevori and Medvedev, give me Daniel Medvedev doing that one. And then Felix Auger Aliasim to make the third round. I like Davidovich Fakina. He's been very consistent as far as making third, fourth rounds in tournaments. He's got a very tough draw in this one section, which is brutal, but I would like to see him in another section of the draw. Then Dimitrov to be Offner. Dimitrov is just playing too well at the moment. I don't see many people that can beat him right now. Then Hercotch over Qualifier. Then I'm going to go for Zhang over Umber. Umber just doesn't play the same in majors. Umber physically, when it gets hot, he doesn't play his best tennis. I think Zhang is a warrior, and Zhang will win that one. Then Fees and Safiulin. As much as I like Safiulin, I just think Fees has such a big game in he really, watching him really impresses me. He doesn't make that many errors. The one knock on him is that he doesn't have a great serve, but nor does Roman Safiulin. So this game, this match could go deep. Five sets maybe have a lot of breaks in it, but I think Fies is so good physically. And again, this this younger generation, Fies, I'm going to add Fies in it with Alcaraz and Sinner because I think that Fies is, has a much better ceiling than Holger Rune. It has much bigger shots, much better weapons. Fees is physically better than Draper, better than Sinner, better than Alcaraz. All of them, I see him getting the least, having the least potential of getting injured. He's not prone to injuries at all, and I think he's going to be really tough for these other guys when he starts to get more matches. I feel like he's going to have an Alcaraz type of season. I think he's going to make the top 10 this year. I think he's super, super good. Then Runa and Jera give me... Holger to win that one. Then Rublev and Taro Daniel. Give me Rublev. Korda and Hallis. Give me Korda. Pretty easy pickings in this section so far. And then I'm going to take, regretfully, Jerry to beat Kotov. Kotov has played really well. And Jerry's up and down. Not that great in majors, but I do think he can get it going and reach the third round. And then Demon are over Arnaldi. So not too many upsets for me so far. But however, I'm going to pick one here. I think Tabilo has played so well so far. And I think Karin Hachanov, who does not have many matches, Tabilo will beat. And then Francis Tiafo and Makach. I think Tiafo is just going to take what he's given and win a few matches here, even though he hasn't been playing well. Maybe he can play himself into form. Baez and Kubler... 
I like Kubler on home soil here to reach the third round, and then Sinner to be the qualifier. Next, Thompson and Tsitsipas. I'm going to pull the upset here. I think Jordan Thompson, who beat Tsitsipas in Indian Wells, can really get it going here in Australia. Older player, veteran, and Tsitsipas has only had one match, been battling with injuries so far, had one match where he lost his Zverev in straight sets. I think that Jordan Thompson can beat him. Then Duckworth and Musetti. Give me Musetti there. Um, Maroshan and the qualifier. I'm going to go for... Ah, I don't know. Maroshan. I just don't... What if I change this? I'm going to go for Chilich here and then Chilich. Because even though Chilich hasn't had many matches, I feel like he still is Marin Chilich. Still a Grand Slam champion. Still a French Open semifinalist just 18 months ago. He could easily reach the third round. Then Fritz and Gojo. I think Gojo could make another deep run, yes, into um, a Sweet 16. He made the Sweet 16 at the U.S. Open, and I think he'll beat Fritz, who is pretty inconsistent in majors. Um, yeah, Fritz is not a great five-step player. doesn't have great physicality. Next, I'm going to go with Ben Shelton over O'Connell, even though O'Connell has been playing great. And Shev No, I'm going to go for Manorino to beat Shevchenko. I just don't think... Um, Alex can keep a level consistently in three out of five sets. Then Monfils to beat Murray. I just think Monfils is a little bit quicker than Andy. Has a bit bigger weapons. Um, bigger serve, bigger forehand, bigger, bigger everything right now. Um, I'm gonna go for Monfils and then Joker to beat Popperin. But that's a brutal second round matchup for the Joker. Popperin could definitely um trouble Joker the way he serves and. Even he's been returning well, been playing well off the ground. I think Popperin is no easy oust for Novak. Then Novak and Monfils. I think it's like 21-0 the record now for Djokovic against Monfils. Make that 22. Um, Manorino and Ben Shelton. Hmm. This is interesting because I think that Ben Shelton has been a, an explosive result type of player. He hasn't really been that consistent, has a couple of tournaments that really bump his ranking up. I wouldn't be surprised if Monarino, the other lefty, um, gets him with the consistency here. Monarino had a career high ranking of 20. I'm going to take Adrian Monarino to make the round of 16. Then Chilich and Gojo. I'm going to go for Gojo again in the Battle of the Croats. I think that... Big serve, big forehand. He can get it done, but look, he could also lose to Roberto Carballas Bena, and I could easily see Carballas Bena there. So I would not go and be betting Borna Goyo if you're looking at this video and like, oh, I want to make picks, because I had people say that to me before in the comments. And this is a real toss up between Carballas Bena and Gojo, but I like Gojo just because I feel like he has the bigger weapons in that one, but who knows. Then Thompson and Musetti. I think we got to go for Jordan Tomo here. And now we're getting a little bit of an interesting bracket here. Got it, Had to spice it up a little bit. I'm going to go for Thompson to beat Musetti here. I just think that Thompson is going to be so excited to play in front of his home crowd. And they're going to be cheering him on. I think he can make a deep run. Then Sinner and Kubler. Give me Sinner here. Sinner, very easy draw. Vodic von de Zanskop, a player that's not playing very well. Then he gets a Q, then gets Kubler, who might be one of the weakest players in the third round. Then I think Tabilo could really expose Tiafo as he is a lefty. Um, so give me Tabilo here. I'm going to go for him. And then Sinner, just super easy draw. Demonor and Jari, give me Demonor, and then Rublev and Korda. Korda just does not have the physicality, I think, to make a deep run in the major. Give me Andre Rublev. Then Rune and Fees. Give me Fees here. I think he's way more upside than Rune, um, as I said earlier. If you look at the two comparison, Fees has the biggest weapon on the court, his forehand. I think Rune has the worst liability on the court with his own serve. Um... Or maybe fees is serve. I don't know. None of them are that good. But this match could have a lot of breaks on it, just like every single one of Fees' matches. But I do think Fees will get it done. He's the much better physically than Rune, and I think he'll make the round of 16. Then Hercotch and Zhang. Mm. This match has been played a lot of times with Hubie and Zhang, and it's super close every time, and Hubie just keeps 
ending up beating him barely. Um, Hubie in majors is not the same as Hubie in other tournaments. Give me Zhang here. I, I just am loving the upsets here so far. I think that it, they're tough to come by in the first round, but I think as we get deeper, we have a solid amount of upsets so far. So give me Zhang. Then Dimitrov over Davidovich Fakina. I just think Dimitrov is that good right now, and Medvedev. So now this bottom half, we're going to have to go a little bit less upsets because we had so many. I think Zverev is just better than Lehechko. Lehechko makes a lot of errors. Zverev doesn't. I like Zverev. And then Rude to beat Nori. I think Nori just has not been able to find that consistent forehand down the line, which he does a great job opening people up cross, but then when he gets to the line, ball hasn't been so clinical. I think that's going to end up hurting him there. So I do like Casper to win that one. Then Draper and Kitchmanovich. I think Draper will get it done, and Draper will move into the fourth round. And he'll play Carlos Alcaraz, but... He'll just be too tired by then, four matches after winning a tournament, which I do think he'll win it in um, Adelaide, where they are right now. I think Alcaraz will beat Draper. And then Zverev will beat Rude. We see this, we've seen this matchup um, before with these two, and I think Zverev has just the way better back in between the two, can really control the court. He, and Rude doesn't put immense pressure on Zverev's forehand. Zverev can change down the line. And I think Zverev will move into the quarterfinals. Then Medvedev and Dimitrov. This is a really bad matchup for Medvedev because Grigor is somebody that can mix it up, that can make him a little bit uncomfortable. But I do like Daniel, nonetheless, to get it done. And I think that he'll face Arthur Fees. I think Arthur Fees is ready to have that breakout. I think he's that good. And I know a lot of people are on him, but that's for a good reason. He's been extremely, extremely good the last few months. So I'm going to take fees there. Has just been improving rapidly. Then Rublev and Demonar. I just think Demonar doesn't have the weapons to contend with Andre Rublev. I think this could be a relatively straightforward match for Andre. And he'll get back to the stage he gets every single time to the major quarterfinal. And he'll, he'll play Sinner. I'm not going to spoil that pick yet, even though I almost did. But Sinner, Sinner could, could go all the way here without dropping a set. I don't think it's going to be a very tough draw for him. Then Gojo and Thompson. Mm, I'm going to go. I'm ready to go Jordan Tomo to make the, the quarterfinals. I think he's play, been playing really well. Um, so I'm going to take him. And then Djokovic to beat Monorino. And then Djokovic, super easy draw for him besides Popper, and I think he'll cruise to the semis, and he'll play Yannick Sinner. Yannick Sinner and Andre Rublev, talking about this matchup, it's not the best matchup for Andre because Sinner is very similar to him. They both strike the ball big off both sides. However, Sinner just plays with a little bit more margin, a little bit more um, change of direction, off the forehand, Rublev loves to play that inside out, inside out, inside out, and then cross court, cross court, cross court. Sinner on the forehand likes to change direction a little bit more. Um, Sinner's backhand also has more spin. I think that's th the key to this match is that Sinner's going to be able to push Rublev back more. Rublev's going to rely a lot on winners, and I think Sinner's just going to get it done. But Rublev, better serve, probably better return. Like Rublev has a good return off the first ball. It's just what he does after, and I think Sinner's going to get that one done. Then Fees and Medvedev. Give me Medvedev there. I just think Medvedev is going to be consistent enough to get it done. And then Zverev and Alcaraz. Um, give me... Give me... Ah... Uh, I, I'm going to go for Zverev here. I feel like Zverev played the beginning of the season really, really well at the ATP Cup. Germany, of course, won the ATP Cup. He himself did great there. And I think Alcaraz, without enough matches, could struggle here in Aussie. It gets really hot. He could cramp up. I think Zverev there. But I think Daniel Medvedev will beat Zverev, and Daniel will get to the finals. I just think Daniel Zverev will be really tired. It gets really hot in Australia, which is... Something you have to take into account. And I think Daniel, who's made the finals here um, on multiple occasions, almost had that win over Nadal. I really think he has a solid path 
here, I mean, he's got a lot of good players in his draw. They're just going to prepare him to, like, he probably has the toughest draw out of all the top four seeds, but I think it's not too hard to the point where he could possibly be upset. I think that he can get get himself to the final here and will be more physically intact than anybody else who can make it to that stage. Because this matchup between Sinner and Djokovic will be extremely physical. I'm going to edge Sinner here. I just think that that I'm going to give the edge to Sinner. I think Djokovic is getting older every year. I know never to go against Djokovic. But or actually, actually, let me take that back. Sinner in a Grand Slam, I don't think is ready to get it done. So I'm going to go for Djokovic. But I will take Daniel Medvedev to win the Australian Open because I feel like He's the best pick to win it all when you're just talking about somebody who's going to play a consistent level every time. He's not going to really get any any physical concerns because he's really good. He can run side to side, puts a lot of balls in the court, big serve. Um, when he's playing attacking tennis well, nobody can beat him in the world. And he just has the lowest floor or, or, or the highest floor out of any player in this draw. And I think Novak or... And Sinner, that could be a really, really physical match that Sinner just comes up short because mentally he can't beat Novak in three out of five. I think Daniel will get it done. So let me know what you think down below in the comments and please be sure to like it and subscribe. But yeah, I'll say it in the real way too. Daniel Medvedev to win the Australian Open. So let me know, let me know what you think and please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.